Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Another day, another record. The S&P clock in its 20th all-time high this year. On optimism, the Fed will be able to engineer a soft landing. Fed speak picking back up today with Powell, Barr and Bostick all on tap. Joining us now to discuss, the president of Queen's College, Cambridge, Mohammed Al-Aryan. Mohammed, let's get straight into it. How overwhelming is the enthusiasm of the last week for this market? It's totally overwhelming and for good reason, John. Initially, we had bottom-up drivers, secular themes that were very powerful. But that rally was narrowing. Now, suddenly, you have a very powerful top-down factor that has come in, enabling central banks that clearly are going to do what they want to do, regardless of selective data focus. Well, let's so talk these about two the things we can. These two things coming together are really powerful. We did the pregame together. We didn't do the post-game. So you were with us, fortunately, going into that news conference. Were you surprised by what came out of the news conference with Chairman Powell? I was surprised by the extent to which he stressed patience in two ways. Patience with inflation running higher. He basically dismissed the fact that we've had some pretty surprising, hotter-than-expected inflation prints. And then the second patience with the balance sheet, saying, you know what, we may get there slower, than we would have otherwise, which means that monetary policy is going to be more expansion than it would have been otherwise. So I was struck that on, on the balance sheet, he took such a f big step forward when he could have waited till the next meeting to do that. So we keep wondering what shoe is going to drop, right? We keep thinking everyone's bullish and then more bullish and then bullish on top of bull. And you have to wonder, OK, well, when does something break? And we were talking on Wednesday, it's the inflation expectations, that at some point this is going to be a higher, more inflationary environment with a Fed that is less willing to fight it. And yet I'm not seeing it in break-even rates. I'm not seeing it in other places that you normally would. Why do you think that is? You see it in gold. Look at the reaction of gold, record highs on gold. I think what you're having is, and you've all said it really well, the, over, the everything rally. So it's going everywhere. What's interesting now is this notion of market enthusiasm, not economic enthusiasm. There's a big difference. Market enthusiasm, uh, enthusiasm could spread to the rest of the world. And that is quite a consequential statement. If that occurs, then the U.S. relative strength is going to be somewhat diminished. I think it's actually too early to pivot. I, I do think that, to use your phrase, U.S. exceptionalism, economic exceptionalism, isn't going to expand to the rest of the world. The U.S. is really exceptional when it comes to its economy. The others aren't doing what the U.S. is doing in terms of investing in the future drivers of growth. They don't have the entrepreneurial society that we have. They don't have the mobility of factors of production that we have. The U.S. is truly exceptional among ad other advanced economies. So do you think it's rational for people to stay in the United States and to keep adding more, even if valuations are at such high levels relative to the rest of the world, to continue to kind of bet on this ship and not expect it to expand elsewhere. So I've been asked that question every single year for the last five years. And every single year, the U.S. premium has increased. And every single year, I said, don't fade the U.S. too early. I see some argument for diversifying away from the U.S. purely on this enthusiasm and on, on relative valuation, but I don't see it as strong. It is not being supported by fundamentals. People have to realize this. This is more betting on the momentum. And I understand that. The momentum factor is very strong right now. You mentioned just a moment ago there's enthusiasm for the stock market. There's not enthusiasm for the economy. Well, does not, how does that make any sense? So what may, the reason why it makes sense, and I've learned this the painful way, is that markets are not the economy. Markets can decouple from, from, from economies for a very long time. And we've seen that happen over and over again. But there are parts of the world, for example, one of the biggest puzzle is while you've had a surge into inflows in U.S. high yield and corporate bonds, investment grade bonds, you haven't had them in emerging markets. And people can't figure So we have this very peculiar situation whereby it is U.S. investors managing inve U.S. investment grade bonds that are taking off benchmark bets in emerging markets. And I think that's because most investors think it's enough to be in the U.S. You wear a few caps. Can we go to the Gramercy cap and talk about what's happening in the EM? What's the reason for that? What are you and the team over at Gramercy thinking about EM at the moment? I think that people have been hurt so much and people like, the same reason why so many people are in cash, they think they can take, get adequate returns from safer places to be in. 
If we were looking at EM and we saw a central banker that appeared to tacitly accept high inflation for longer, I think we'd be doing something very different with the assets of that country, particularly with the currency. Why is it different with the US? Because the US issues the reserve currency, because the US is the place where people outsource their savings to be managed. The US can misbehave, quote unquote, much longer and in a much bigger way than any other country in the world. Which is the reason why we've all been waiting for this to show up in longer term bond yields and waiting and waiting and asking lots of people the question and everybody says it's not going to happen because we're the reserve currency of the world. At a certain point, is the concern about inflation only going to show up in gold? Is this the only place or will you start to see it wake up? Is that something that you're willing to bet on? Look, we've set aside three concerns that are still in play. We just are not focusing on them right now. One is the U.S. deficit and the tremendous amount of issuance. I remember being with you back in October where the question was, who's going to buy all these bonds? No one cares right now. So that's issue number one. Issue number two is we've taken a small step in Japan for exiting from a highly distorted monetary policy regime. And we have a really long journey ahead of us, but no one is asking the question, will Japanese investors have to sell all these foreign securities they've bought? And of course, the third one is a banking system. There are, this is not a banking system issue. This is a few banks that are still facing difficulties. And they, that is going to play out this year. But it's not a banking system issue. You talk about Japan. And let's go there for a minute because they did come out with some inflation numbers overnight that were hotter than expected. And yet people aren't concerned because it seems like the BOJ put is as consistent as the Federal Reserve put in terms of not over hiking or being over ambitious about how much to uh, really tighten the screws. Does that make you think, you know what, even if that's a, a sort of outside threat, that's not going to happen. This isn't a normalizing cycle. This was simply kicking the goalpost a little bit further out the field. So Lisa, you're doing what John does, which you get me on a Friday, and then I front run <laughs> my Financial Times article coming out next week. It's okay. No one's listening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So I, I, I think we're going to look back this week, on this week, as the week in which central banks abandoned a point inflation target for a range. That we're going to look back and say this was the point when they realized, in the case of the Fed, for example, it's no longer a good idea to have a 2%, let's have 2 to 3%. It's, not, it's going to happen in a very slow way. It's going to, the first step was taken this week when you acknowledge that inflation will be higher, you acknowledge growth will be higher, but you see straight through it. Japan, same thing happened. So this, we're going to look back, and this is my hypothesis on this, as this has have been a really important moment, but it's going to play out very slowly. Japan is going to play out very slowly. They will tolerate harder than expected inflation for much longer than anybody expected. Now, if you're in the equity market, that's music to your ear, as long as it doesn't get out of control. And so far, inflationary expectations have been rel relatively well anchored, as you said raises questions about what it means for the bond market. We'll talk about the consequences a little bit later. That was the greatest promotion that the FT's ever had, Mohammed. They'll be happy You do with it that. to me every I single know, week. But it's good for everyone. <laughs> we get a little bit, they get a little bit, everybody wins, okay? 